The 66th William Lowell Putnam Mathematical Competition, Saturday, December 3rd, 2005. Question A5. A Putnam integral done three ways. To evaluate this integral, our first substitution will be to let x equal 1 minus phi over 1 plus phi. Differentiating x, we get negative 2 over 1 plus phi quantity squared d phi. Next, if we substitute this into the natural log function, we get the natural log of 1 minus phi over 1 plus phi plus 1. We'll combine those things inside the log, and we get natural log of 2 over 1 plus phi. We also have to evaluate x squared plus 1 with our substitution. So 1 minus phi over 1 plus phi quantity squared plus 1 will work out to be 2 times 1 plus phi squared over 1 plus phi quantity squared. Taking the reciprocal of that 1 over x squared plus 1 will leave us with 1 half 1 plus phi quantity squared over 1 plus phi squared. Adjusting our limits of integration, x1 is equal to 0, so phi1 will equal 1. And x2 is equal to 1, so phi2 will equal 0. So now we have an integral where our limits of integration have actually been reversed. The natural log of 2 over 1 plus phi multiplied by 1 half 1 plus phi quantity squared over 1 plus phi squared multiplied by negative 2 over 1 plus phi squared d phi. And then we can get some things to cancel out nicely. The negative sign in here will allow us to reverse the limits of integration, so make it from 0 to 1. And we can use the property of logarithms to split the logarithm of 2 over 1 plus phi into two separate pieces. Using the linearity of integrals, we can then evaluate each of these integrals separately. Noticing that the second integral is equivalent to the integral i that we're trying to find. So bringing that to the other side, we get our integral is equal to 1 half the integral of 0 to 1 of natural log of 2 over 1 plus phi squared d phi. And that's going to evaluate that integral to the arctangent. The arctangent of 1 will be pi over 4. The arctangent of 0 is 0. So we get the natural log of 2 multiplied by pi over 8 as our answer. Method number 2. For method number 2, we're going to make the substitution of letting x equal the tangent of theta. Differentiating, we get secant squared theta d theta. And underneath that logarithm, we have x squared plus 1, which becomes tan squared plus 1, which is secant squared theta. So there'll be some cancellation here. Adjusting our limits of integration to 0 to pi over 4, we get the integral to be the natural log of tangent plus 1 d theta. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to employ a rule of integrals. The integral from 0 to some constant a of f of a minus x dx is equivalent to the integral from 0 to a of f of x dx. And here, our constant a is pi over 4, and our f of x, essentially, natural log of tan theta plus 1. Now the purpose of writing it this way, it might seem a little bit more complicated to do it that way, 
But now we can use a property of the tangent, namely, we can find the tangent of the difference of two angles. So the tangent of pi over 4 minus theta can be rewritten using the difference formula for tangent. Tangent alpha minus tangent beta over 1 plus tan alpha tan theta, tan beta, excuse me. And alpha here is pi over 4 and beta is theta. That allows us to rewrite the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of the natural log of 1 minus tan theta over 1 plus tan theta plus 1 d theta. Cleaning up inside of that natural log, we get the natural log of 2 over 1 plus tan theta. And using again the properties of natural logarithms, we can split that into a difference. Using the linearity of integrals, we can then split that into two integrals. We get something similar to happen as before. That second integral is equal to the integral i we're interested in finding. So we bring that to the other side. We evaluate this easy integral, 0 to pi over 4 of the natural log of 2 d theta. And we divide by 2 on both sides. Pi, natural log of 2 over 8. Method number three, the Feynman method. The Feynman method starts by choosing a function of a parameter. Here the parameter will be alpha. We're going to let f of alpha equal this integral with that parameter incorporated inside the natural log. Then the second part to this process is to differentiate that function with respect to the parameter alpha, which means we're going to partially differentiate inside the integral sign. That'll leave us with one over, or excuse me, x over alpha x plus one multiplied by one over x squared plus one dx as our integrand. Now that integrand can be separated by using a partial fraction decomposition, and I'll just outline it right here. We'll get a fraction a over alpha x plus 1 plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1. So if we were to make a substitution into our integrand, the general form would look like this. And we can use a little bit of linearity of integrals to split that up even further. So we get f prime of alpha is equal to the constant a times the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over alpha x plus 1 dx plus b integral from 0 to 1 of x over x squared plus 1 dx plus c integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. And each of these integrals are rather simple to do with a little substitution. This first one will allow lambda to be alpha x plus 1. So 1 over alpha d lambda is equal to dx. A quick substitution here, we get a constant of a over alpha. And the integral of d lambda over lambda is the natural log. So we get a over alpha, natural log of alpha plus 1. Next, let w equal x squared plus 1. Differentiating that, we get 1 half dw equals x dx. And we get b over 2, the integral of dw over w, or b over 2, the natural log of w. This is b over 2, the natural log of x squared plus 1. Evaluated from 0 to 1 gives us b over 2, the natural log of 2. Third integral c times an integral which you should recognize as the one from arctangent from 0 to 1. And that's going to evaluate to c times pi over 4. Now, the partial fraction decomposition that we spoke of earlier will yield the constants a equals negative alpha over alpha squared plus 1, b is equal to 1 over alpha squared plus 1, and c is equal to alpha over alpha squared plus 1. 
Feel free to do this partial fraction decomposition yourself. And next, f prime of alpha is equal to negative one over alpha squared plus one, natural log of alpha plus one, plus natural log of two over two, times one over alpha squared plus one, plus pi alpha over four alpha squared plus one. We can pull out a factor of one over alpha squared plus one and rearrange some terms in there to make it look nicer. And since f of alpha would be the integral of f prime of alpha d alpha, we integrate this function, which we get natural log of two over two times the integral of al d alpha over alpha squared plus one plus pi over four integral of alpha over alpha squared plus one d alpha minus integral of natural log of alpha plus one over alpha squared plus one d alpha. This is where we'll now take a note that if we were to evaluate f of one minus f of zero, we would get the integral we're interested in minus zero or just the integral we're interested in. So f of one is equal to our integral. Now our integral is the integral from zero to one, the natural log of x plus one over x squared plus one dx, and that's going to equal natural log of two over two arctan of x from zero to one plus pi over four natural log of two over two minus the integral that we're interested in evaluating. So again, we're going to bring that other integral to the other side, just like in the previous problems. The two integrals prior to that one are going to add up to natural log of two pi over four or pi natural log of two over four minus that integral is equal to the integral, so bringing that integral to the other side and dividing by two, we get i is equal to pi natural log of two over eight, just as before. A Putnam integral done three ways. Now for a challenge question. Evaluate the integral from zero to one of the natural log of x plus one over x squared plus one dx. Can you evaluate this integral using complex contour integration? This is your challenge problem. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for the next one. Good luck. And hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell for more videos.